Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Colleen White. I teach in the Department of Recreation and Leisure Studies, and uh, my Chancellor's Chair uh, research study was called Looking Back to Look Forward, and that's a key uh, concept in the capstone experience. I'm going to get into that in a minute. But it was Looking Back to Look Forward, Designing Meaningful Capstone Experiences in Therapeutic Recreation, which is my uh, home field. So the rationale for this study um, in 2019, I started teaching the fourth year course, RECL 4F22, Advanced Methods in TR. And in anticipation of teaching the course, I really started, I really reflected a lot on a fourth year course. I had up until that point taught first, second, and third years. And I was consumed with this idea that in 12 short months, our students would no longer be students. And so what was the... What was the bridge? How was this course a bridge between being a student and being a novice practitioner? And so I went down a number of rabbit holes that particular summer, and one of them was capstone experiences. I had known capstones um, fairly superficially, but really to figure out, to, to understand what they were and um, understand the pieces of them. That's really what I spent that summer doing. So capstones are used to describe a course or experience that provides opportunities for a student to apply the knowledge gained throughout their undergraduate degree. It involves integrating uh, capabilities and employability skills and occurs usually in the final year of an undergraduate course. And so uh, in the first week of 4F22, I have a, a photo, I have a uh, one of the PowerPoint slides is a series of puzzle pieces, and it's all the required courses that students have taken over the course of their degree. And then the idea being that this particular course, this fourth year capstone course, then pulls all these puzzle pieces together and fits them into this map. Um, some of the courses they may take are, you know, assessment. Um, a 12 week course on assessment, then they take a 12 week course on facilitation, then they take a 12 week course on evaluation. But never do we ever um, bleed those courses into each other. Never do we start to merge them together and say, well, actually that that line in this 12 week course overlaps with this <laughs> this line in the other 12 week course. So I really got the sense that that this capstone experience was pulling it all together and um, you know, really playing with the the breadth of courses that they've taken. So capstone courses generally do serve these three major functions. I've talked about the first one to synthesize and extend uh, past learning. The second one was to develop a professional identity that assists students to transition from the classroom to employment. And I found this one super heavy <laughs> when I was when I was uh, exploring it a little bit. This sort of okay, I need you know teaching virtues, teaching morals, teaching that that professional identity, who they are, um, what is important to them, that sort of thing. And luckily, we had a lot of uh, supports here on campus. So uh, folks from career services were able to come. Um, intercultural practice, I was able to pull in some, uh, some key uh, experts, subject matter experts into that, you know, uh, to help me with that sort of idea of supporting professional identity. And the third, to ensure that students have mastered a variety of professional employability skills. So things like critical thinking, communication, teamwork, conflict management, decision making and ethical practices. Now, I know as academics that mastery word is uh, problematic for us. So how about this to ensure that students have confidence in their professional and employability skills? Uh, I think that perhaps is, is uh, better for us to move forward. So the research study itself had three phases, and the first was uh, I picked to, to explore the literature. And so I wanted to know what the exemplar practices and innovative methodologies were as they, relate, as they related to redesigning the course um, in line with the, the principles of a capstone experience. So the first thing I did was to explore my own field of therapeutic recreation, and um, I found out that a lot of our... Um, a lot of our research studies associated with education were really focused on curriculum surveys or trend analysis surveys. So less about innovation in practice and more these snapshot 
research studies on uh, what's going on, who are our students, who are our faculty, what are their uh, educational background. In my field, we also have a certification, so we're faculty members certified. Uh, where were, where was the department in relation to the university? So I have a colleague out west who's in a kinesiology department. I have a colleague out east who's in a human sciences department. You know, uh, where where was the department and the learning within the university itself? Uh, so not a lot of innovation. I'll, <laughs> I'll just summarize with that. Uh, so I did have to go outside of the field and luckily there's quite a lot of innovation uh, as it relates to capstone experiences. And what I what I um, what I decided on or what I that the buckets of, of innovation were really around assessments and then the significance of experiential learning. So the first had to do with really innovative uh, assessments that's, that, that faculty members were embedding into their courses. So things like scaffolding peer assessment. So if you could take a, a, a workshop that a student might engage in, and they were to give that workshop two or three times over the course of the term, and peers were looking at certain criteria each time, and were they able to identify um, growth between the first attempt and the second attempt of the workshop. So could a student take those comments and suggestions and really enhance their ability to uh, lead this workshop from the first time to the second? So this idea of scaffolding was really uh, quite significant around assessments. Hackathons. I don't know. I just really like hackathons or something about them. I've never gone to one. I just like the idea of them. They're probably not necessarily innovative anymore, but I just like the idea of the, the sort of, you know, stressful experience. Everybody's all in um, and you've got this this timed experience. Uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. And then the third one was this project based learning. And I like that. I don't like problem based learning. I do like this project based learning idea. And so I've tried to weave that in a little bit um, since doing some of this um, this review of literature into the course. So, you know, you come to a, a class with a with a very intense case study and you've got this team around you and you're really you've got sort of expertise students are are identifying themselves as experts in a particular area so you've got two or three students who are going to do the review of literature they're going to look at best practices if that's what you want to call it evidence informed practice you've got students who are really going to focus on the design of of the project you've got students who are really good at the writing so you're you're focusing on the expertise or the developing expertise of the, the of of the students as a team and the last piece is this significance of experiential learning, which makes sense. The capstone is about application. So can you organize this real time experiential application um, into the course such that the actual classroom setting then becomes an opportunity for reflection? So students are doing, but then in the classroom, they're also um, pulling it apart. They're teasing it apart and and um, with support of others, they're they're maybe coming to an awareness of things that had happened in their practicums or their internships or whatever field of experience um, that allows them that growth and that development um, over time. So that was phase one. So it's sort of setting the stage about what, what a capstone is and how it's used in practice. The second phase was the snapshot of education in TR across Canada. Uh, so I interviewed faculty members, 15 faculty members across Canada, uh, virtually, did virtual interviews, and we looked at things like design consideration in upper year courses, learning outcomes, breadth of assessment, and in partnership with a grad student in uh, the Faculty of Applied Health Sciences, we engaged in a process of thematic data analysis, and shout out to CPI for supporting that particular grad student. So as it relates to this uh, presentation, I did pull out a couple of our findings because I think, again, they're aligned with this capstone idea um, and uh, just wanted to share some of the findings. So the first one was weaving together the what and the how and now the critical why of TR practice and that the, the red part is really um, what what uh, my peers across Canada spoke to the value of that fourth year uh, capstone experience. And so uh, they really wanted, you know, we have to teach the what and the how. 
but then <laughs> it's almost like this in fourth year there's this unlearning that happens okay here's the what and the how you bet but let's flip it on its side and say does that happen always is there anything missing um when wouldn't that happen you're really starting to play with the what and the how and so you can see here my colleagues uh they Things like I have them personally experience an activity before knowing how uh, before facilitating it. I feel like building on what they know and of course that prior knowledge from other classes. Second says I don't want them to just know how I want them to understand why. What's the why of an assessment? What's the why of planning? If they don't understand the why they're creating a care plan, the how of it gets lost. And the last is that every assignment has reflection to it. So what did you actually learn? You did it. But so what? What would you change if you were doing it again? And a lot of our participants, uh, our faculty members said, you know, you can't do that in first year. You can't do that in second year. Again, it has to be this sort of layering the scaffolding of experiences. And then it's in fourth year where you really do, um, you know, there's the black and the white of an experience. You merge those together, the gray, that's, that's where the fun happens. That's where the critical uh, learning happens in the middle. The next theme was prioritizing experiential education. And so it really was about um, getting students out of the off campus and um, interacting with with clients uh, and learn taking that foundational knowledge and applying it. So um, one of our participants said, I do believe wholeheartedly in the experiential ed model. I've tried to live that through the way I structure my classes. Another said, we we try to foster experiential opportunities as much as possible. Most recently, students did a project in the school system where they're facilitating leisure ed opportunities. And the third is I bring in professionals who work in different contexts and also think about TR in different ways. I find that those examples are real aha moments for students. What's exciting is when you can see some of the students resonate with the way a professional is talking about TR. And I think being from Brock, um, the Experiential Education Foundation here at the university, um, this was just music to my ears to hear that this experiential education really is important in this field. And the next theme was critiquing TR practice. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so again, it's this idea you can't critique something in the early years of of practice. You've got to know the foundation, but then you really are starting to um, to look at it in a different light, right? You're really starting to say um, what's innovative, how do we build in, how do we bring in that evidence informed practice and change things? What what needs to looking ahead? What are some of the the issues? that will change the way we practice, sort of opening up our eyes and being really thoughtful about the future. So I want them to be able to critique the evidence and really think through whether the evidence supports their decision, but I also need to make their own decisions because not every participant is going to fit within the research that we have. And the second said, we're trying to think about other groups for whom TR might be meaningful and support their well-being. So it's helping students to think beyond disability in terms of other identities or intersectionality of identities that may that they may encounter in practice. And then the final phase uh, of the research is then adding student insights. So the students that have been in this course, um, it's been a big gap of this research to date. Uh, so phase three is formalizing a process of soliciting student experiences with the capstone course. So things like what do students consider to be the value of a capstone experience? How did the process of looking back to look forward enable students to understand academic content more deeply? And how does the course shape, if at all, student confidence as they embark on their internship? So one of the assessments that we do in this course, uh, I call it an academic audit. And so students pull in uh, lecture notes, um, you know, assignments, any resource that they have from all of their previous courses into this, um, this, this document that's organized around my profession's knowledge domains. So there's a third party organization that has determined uh, what are the key principles, what are the key foundational knowledge uh, concepts of my field. And so I take that, create this document, and the students plug in uh, content from all of their courses that they've taken to date. So we look at that and say, well, you know, what have we done well? What are the gaps? 
and the gaps then are built into student led workshops in the course. And so the idea of, of students identifying the gaps and then filling them themselves um, really, <laughs> really supports that that learning. I can teach them, but I think uh, having them go down, uh, explore those um, those areas really helps the, the learning process. So that piece will take place this summer. Um, students are also in, uh, they're in an internship in the summer, a 560 hour internship. So they do have, still have their Brock email address um, and they will be able to uh, fill in these surveys. Thanks for sharing, what an amazing project. Thank you. you. Can you tell us about your takeaways? The takeaways. Um, so, uh, you know, in terms of takeaways, some of the things that uh, I'll put out there, I think this lens of, I'll call it critical constructivism, does enable students to construct meaning by weaving in that previous experience, gaining skills through that active engagement and, you know, Mesereau's reflection in action, on action. Um, you know, you've got this practicum. How do you then then take what a student's experiencing there in this, uh, you know, off campus experience and then um, really reflect on it uh, in, in great honesty <laughs> uh, moving forward? Uh, and then the last piece uh, relating back to the professional identity piece, um, I found this quote when I was um, when I was doing some work last year. Virtue pertains to the moral habits, qualities, or characteristics of an individual, such as fairness, honesty, and comp and compassion, the sum of which constitutes the individual's moral character. Along with knowledge and skill, moral character is essential for practitioners. And so I think it's that idea. I read somewhere about the heart and the art of practice, and so how do you um, how do you play with both of those concepts uh, in a university course? So, thank you very much for listening. <laughs> Thanks, Julia. Thanks so much for sharing. I really appreciate it, um, and we look forward to you know future. <laughs>